Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your girl, Raida. So in my last video, I told you guys that I'm going back to school and I'm going into a field that's completely different from what I previously studied in school. I am currently in my 30s. I do have a degree in ECE, which basically stands for Early Childhood Education. ECEs are teachers who specialize in working with young children from toddlers all the way up to age six. So over there, my main role was to nurse and provide basic instructions to the little ones. They are so freaking cute. And the reason why I went into ECE was because I love, 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 love kids. I feel like children are the pillar of our future, okay? Without them, we have nothing. And when they're so young, especially from the ages of like zero to like five, they're like sponges. Even at like a few months when you think they don't understand, they really are like comprehending to their level of understanding. Children are very observant and they're very quick to question things. They're very curious. So that was the reason why I wanted to get into the field. So I did that for about three years. After that, I decided that this is not a field that I no longer want to stay in. I know this is really bad for me to say, but I'm one of those people if I do the same thing over and over again, or if I have the same conversations over and over again, I get bored, I get tired, I get frustrated and I no longer want to be in it. So that's basically what happened. And another reason was I was looking for something with a little bit more pay, you know, your, for me, I believe your pay should never be stagnant. It should be progressing. And in my case, it was progressing, but it wasn't progressing to how I wanted it to progress, if that makes sense. Okay, so like I said, I was looking for something with a little bit more pay, and that's basically what prompted me to uh, my career change. I'm the type of person that naturally does research before I jump on anything. So the first thing that I did was I hopped on Google to do research to see what programs I can take. And after that, I went on, I went to YouTube. For those of you who may not know, YouTube has a lot of people that are in school, that are in nursing school, there's people that are in dental hygiene, there's people that are even doctors, pharmacists, um, and sometimes I like to follow those people's journey through school. There's people doing masters, there's people doing PhDs. So I basically looked around on YouTube to see if there's anybody that was taking medical laboratory technician, and to my surprise, I couldn't find a single video. I lied, I found one other person, and the only thing is with her, she's a medical laboratory technologist, and I'm a technician. And technicians work under the technologist, so she's not, re she is in my, in my field, but she's not really doing, she wouldn't be doing exactly what I would be doing, if that makes sense. So as I mentioned in my previous video, if you guys haven't seen it, this is what actually prompted me to make YouTube a YouTube channel, so that I can actually provide information to people, about this field people who may be interested and just don't know how to go about it don't know how to start that's what i'm here for that is where you guys have me i got you i got you okay so as i was saying the majority of people in the field right now in the medical laboratory technician or technologist like the majority of people in the field are baby boomers and baby boomers are retiring so there's going to be in the next few years there's going to be a huge massive opening for medical laboratory technicians and technologists so the need is going to increase so this is actually the perfect time for you guys to get into the field to make that money okay to make that money so just to give you guys a brief um, information on what medical laboratory technicians do i am actually going to list all of the things that they do on, my, on the screen so you guys can see them for you for yourselves but just to kind of give you guys a brief idea on what medical laboratory technicians do we can take blood so anything that can come off the human body like blood urine feces we can take it and analyze it in our lab i'm gonna just read to you guys quickly and i'm also gonna put them on the screen um, to tell you guys um, exactly some of the things that we do, it's a lot, but I am going to read them to you. And what I'm reading right now, I'm actually, I'll show you guys, this is actually one of my notes that I got from my teacher. And this is actually the Laboratory and Specimen Collection Center Licensing Act. So I'll show you guys, that's what it looks like. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but this is pretty much what it looks like. Hold on. That's pretty much what it looks like. And 
This is, so I'm just gonna read it to you guys quickly what it says. Some of the things that technicians do will be blood sample procurement, sample preparation for analysis, example separation, numbering, including referral specimens. Also, we do reagent preparation. We do media preparation, smear preparation, i.e. blood films. So smears can come from anywhere. Um, we do staining of smears. We do cover slipping of slide preparation. Um, we do planting and streaking of microbiology specimens. We do urinalysis and urinalysis is the study of urine. So we do do your analysis. We also are able to set up the erythro site sedimentation test. And that's a test basically that determines to see if you have any type of um, inflammation in your body. If there is something going on with your body, inflammation, infection, anything, typically it will show up in that test. The rates for that test will drop. Okay, so that's about it for today's video. I hope you guys did find it informative. Also, if you have any feedback for me, leave me a comment down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.